So basically what you're looking at here is a true bolt-on hybrid kit for existing technology. You can put this on anything. We chose to do this 57 Pontiac, which is running the LS motor because it's kind of a popular engine swap that people do today. But uh, the system bolts on there, allows you to uh, achieve 150 foot-pounds of torque without sacrifice to fuel efficiency or emissions. You know, I look at all the products, you know, and I'm a motorhead like everybody else out there, but I'm like, why should I why should I give something up to gain something? You know, why should I give up uh, fuel efficiency for power? And in this perfect example here, you don't have to do that. It actually does just the opposite. It actually increases fuel efficiency while giving you that white knuckle smile on your face. So I heard um, earlier that when the car comes to a stop, the system shuts down. It's got smarts like that built in. Is that correct? Yeah, there's many different modes to the system. So if you so chose to go in, you know, mode three or whatever to do the stop-start feature, absolutely, the car shuts itself off after a few seconds there at the light. And as soon as you get ready to take off, they, of course, the the hybrid system, the electric motor, starts the car back up, and off you go. So how long would you get out of a charge? And I guess, and if it ran out, what happens to the system? What what happens there? Yeah, you know, it's a I get I get this asked all the time, and it's a complicated thing to explain. But to give you an example, this car, because of the size of it, uh, we have a range of probably about 60 miles at 35 miles to a gallon. Once you go outside that range, the system just reverts into hybrid mode, which is only about a 15 to 30 percent overall increase in fuel efficiency. However, since it is a true hybrid, it has regenerative braking, so now it's repowering the batteries as every time you you know go to slow down. Um, you know, and you capture that waste energy associated with the vehicle itself. Is there an operating RPM that the engine needs to be for this to run, or can it run up to a red line of an engine? Yes, it can run uh, a, a higher RPM than actually the engine's capable of doing. I mean, this electric motor here is capable of uh, you know 8,500 RPM, and of course the motor's tapped out at 6,000. So, so does this system create boost like conventional supercharger? No, not at all. It actually, uh, uh, the electric motor that's cog belted to the crankshaft, the electric motor actually helps the engine do its job. So it's kind of like you and I picking up a five gallon bucket of water together. It's much easier than if you picked it up or if I picked it up. So now you have this electric motor that's helping the gas engine do its job. So essentially you're taking the load off the engine, so it's not doing much and that's what increases fuel economy. That's correct, yes. So in the back here, we've got the batteries that the system's running off. Expand on that. Yeah, what you have back here are a lithium iron phosphate style battery. This is a 12 kilowatt battery pack. You know, each one of those cells have a 100 amp hour capability. Um, you know, they're only 3.32 volts, so that times 35 is somewhere around 115 nominal voltage. Now, I get asked all the time, well, could you go longer in a range? Sure, you just put more batteries on it, you know. So it's very specific to what it is that you want to do and how that you want to set the car up. I mean, because the hybrid kit itself actually only has uh, a few parts. I mean, you've got a battery pack, you've got an electric motor, and you've got a controller. At the moment, those 35 batteries, how much extra weight would that add to the vehicle? It's under 250 pounds. I mean, to me, it's great traction. <laughs> so. This basically is just an inverter. It's a charge system. Um, it allows you to uh, use your industry standard uh, J135, whatever they call it, this kind of industry standard charge station port, or you can just plug it into 110 or 240. It doesn't really care what, how you want to charge it. And what would, uh, what would charge time be? For, for if this was completely run down, what would that, how long would that take? I mean, most people, I guess, would, they would charge this overnight at their home. Oh yeah, I mean that's what I would do is, you know, you go drive, you know, most people don't drive over 80 miles in a day, so you, you know, go home in the evening, you plug it in, and now you're getting a, a, an actual cost savings on your fuel source, because electricity is 75 cents uh, equivalent gallon to where gas and diesel is, you know, $3. So now you get this 250 uh, percent cost savings associated with the fuel source, so why not use that? I mean, that's like the world's best racing fuel. You know, if you put a supercharger on this vehicle, the first thing that happens, you might get a smile on your face, but your fuel economy gets cut in half, and now you have to run super high premium fuels at, you know, or five to ten dollars a gallon to where electricity is only 75 cents. And you also said um, earlier that you could adapt the system to any car, so the engine's not driving the system, it it's not robbing any power, so it's not like a supercharger and a little motor can have some adverse effects at all. Exactly. It's totally autonomous, standalone, does not need uh, any form of input associated from the vehicle to make the decision on what it's doing. So that the beauty of it is it doesn't alter or affect what it is that you have. It's only going to enhance that um, through the cost savings of the fuel source and, of course, the additional power that you get out of the system.
Well, um, thanks for um, showing us this today. I'm sure we have a lot of interest back home with a system like this. Australian fuel prices are very expensive. Yeah, well, what's better than a 5,000 pound car that can make over 500 horsepower that you can get 35 miles a gallon out of? Not much. Yeah.